What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. All right, so before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to the brother Anthony for the $20 donation via the Cash App. Much respect to you for showing love to Too Raw for TV. All right, so. Um, <clears throat> been talking about Kawhi Leonard a bit, and this video involves Kawhi Leonard. Now, this is involving a time when Kawhi Leonard was at the peak of his career, just coming off of an NBA championship, an improbable NBA championship with the Toronto Raptors back in 2019. You may recall that... Uh, I, after an acrimonious split with the San Antonio Spurs, they chose to trade him to a team that didn't even physically belong in the United States. They traded him to the only team outside the United States in Toronto, the Raptors. This, of course, is a trade that sent DeMar DeRozan to the San Antonio Spurs. And Kawhi wound up making lemonade out of lemons in life in basketball. And he put that Raptors team on his back, which was a really good team without him. But he was a totally different player than Jamal DeRozan, who is a really good player. But uh, incidentally, when you look at total career points, uh, DeRozan blows them out of the water which goes to show you that stats or cumulative stats aren't always the be-all when it comes to determining how great a player is. So LeBron fans tell me, oh, he has 40,000-plus points. Well, DeMar Rosen, I'm thinking off the top of my head, he probably has, what, 22,000 points now? And Kawhi's at, what, maybe 13,000? But if you ask who's the greater player, there's no comparison, no doubt about it. But anyway, at this particular time, Kawhi Leonard was fresh off of a championship, fresh off of his second championship, I should say, in his career, his second finals MVP. He was getting comparisons to Michael Jordan, at least as far as his offensive tendencies. Mid-range game, you know, uh, his tendencies on the court, his uh, strength as a two-way player. Uh, he was getting a lot of comparisons to the older Jordan. But anyway, enter LeBron James and enter the media. Now, you may recall LeBron got a lot of flack in 2010 <clears throat> when he took his talents, as he put it, to South Beach. He promised not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven. They won two. They went two and two, actually, in the NBA Finals. They underachieved. Even Dwayne Wade conceived that that heatles, the heatles, as they put it, they underachieved. But LeBron still call out a flack, you know, and uh, you can make an argument. He felt the pressure because this is the thing about a lot of LeBron fans, the younger ones, they don't understand. LeBron had a lot of pressure on him after that loss in 2010 to the Celtics, the game six loss when he had what was being called the most irrelevant triple double in playoff history. Uh he, you could argue he quit on his team. He was being called a quitter. I remember. I remember before Clutch Sports uh, entrusted their tentacles into the fabric of social media and the ongoing outlets, news media outlets that exist in sports. Before that, the power structure that favors LeBron 
uh, totally ensconced itself into the uh, the fabric of media. LeBron wasn't getting all this biased coverage. Uh, they were actually rather anti-LeBron. And you may recall that first year, 2010-2011, he was the villain. Teams outside of, outside of Miami, excuse me, were booing him. But then he goes back when he started seeing the Wayne Wade was getting long in the tooth, right? He, he could sit writing on the wall. And plus, let's be honest, unbeknownst to them, his diva ways were rubbing uh, Pat Riley wrong, okay? He went back to Cleveland. And he won a championship there. And that's the one championship that I kind of want to put uh, as a, one of the great championships of all times. But, I mean, at the same time, they did benefit from a suspension in the NBA Finals, right? which I think had never happened before or since. And an injury, which occurs, happens with Andrew Bogut. Okay? Gets blown out of water twice in a row by the Warriors, the Kevin Durant Warriors. Now, to be fair, we we don't really count those ones as much either because KD was playing with a goddamn, it was like a video game cheat out there. All right? So LeBron then takes his talents out west. Uh, everybody, you know, his, everybody, his, his circle said, go west, young man, go west. And he went to L.A. In his first year there, without the help of a super team, he failed epically. Now, with a media campaign, you may recall, 2019, with a media campaign putting pressure on KD to go east, prove that you could win all of the the affiliates, Nick Wright, Shannon Sharp, all screaming, KD needs to prove he can win without Steph Curry. Notice that when he left, that that stopped all of a sudden. Because really it was about getting him out of the West, bringing up that Warriors team to have an easier path for LeBron to win a championship. That's what that was all about. And when that was accomplished, they could care less if KD wins. Look how he's with this another super team with the Suns, and they don't care. They don't care if he wins or not. It was all BS. A bunch of blah, 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 yaggy, shmackety. But they had a serious media campaign for them to get AD. Remember that? And they got him. But that wasn't enough for LeBron and the Lemaniacs out there. This is what he never got enough criticism for. He tried to form another super team in LA. They were pressuring Kawhi to go to LA. Matter of fact, there were false reports being put out. I think, matter of fact, wasn't it Adrian Wojnarowski that put out a, 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 a report that sources were telling him he was going to go to LA? Ultimately, he went to the Clippers. According to Anthony Davis himself, he said that he thought Kawhi almost did sign with LA, the, the Lakers. But I think what messed it up was the perception that he would just be another rung in the system while LeBron gets all the credit. And, you know, Kawhi's a guy that needs the ball in his hands. He can't just be a spot up. He needs the ball. And with AD there, you know, how's that going to work? So at the end of the day, With LeBron telling him something to the effect of, in two or three years, this is going to be yours, which would have been a lie. Because here we are five years later, going on six years later, and LeBron is still in full, as a matter of fact, he's in control more than ever in L.A. But it is shameful. It is outright shameful that this man tried to assemble his third super team in a row after the heels 
and after the Cavaliers team with Kevin, Kevin Love and uh, Kawhi, uh, Kyrie Irving, excuse me, he tried to do another super team. I know a lot of people don't like Charles Barkley. He's absolutely correct, though. Can this guy compete? Can he just go out there and compete? He has to stack the deck like it's never been stacked before. And he tried to do it again, and nobody really called him out on his bullshit. Bro, you already have the most dominant at that time. Anthony Davis was the most dominant big man in the league. People forget that version of Anthony Davis before he got kind of fattened up and softened by the L.A. lifestyle, whatever happened. He was a beast. Average of 27 and like 12, 27 to 13 in New Orleans. You already acquired him or about to acquire him. You want the best player in basketball too? The guy that's getting Jordan comparisons? The guy that's the reigning finals MVP? You want him too? My God. And remember, all those guys, Shannon Sharp, Nick Wright, Nick Wrong, <laughs> uh, all of them, they were praising Kawhi when it was believed that he may possibly sign with L.A. But as soon as he signed with the other L.A. team, oh, all that praise turned to criticism. Hell, even Skip Bayless stopped referring to him by his name. Call him by his jersey number. Uh, Shannon Sharp started making up bad stats about him. Or oh, Skip, excuse me, thing, Skip. He only shoots 45% for the floor for his career, Skip. I said, wait a minute. No, he don't. He shoots 40 At the time, I said, he shoots 49%. He's just making stuff up. Yeah, he's a thing, Skip. He only averages one assist per game. I looked up Skip. That, that's, I mean, you can't win like that, Skip. 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 Here's the thing, Skip. They just started dogging this dude, man. They started dogging him hard. Talking about how he's low managing. Meanwhile, LeBron does the same damn thing. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. But it is what it is, man. But yeah, man, I had to do a video talk about this, bro. Like, this man, LeBron James, was trying to form another super team. And it was at that time, I remember, it was at that moment when I started really noticing and starting suspecting back then, 2018, 2019, I started suspecting. I said, something's not right here in the media. Like, there's way too many people that are no longer analyzing basketball, but they're just regurgitating, you know, it's almost like pre-approved praise and, and adulation for this guy. And it, it was just excessively saccharine, you know what I'm saying? Like, God, man, what is this? What is this crap? Like, yeah, Michael Jordan got a lot of attention and praise, but back then they, they made sure that they promoted other players too. Other players got praised, but th this is a whole different thing, man. You know? But it's gotten even worse, though. But yeah, man, tell me what you guys think.